Good morning. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and we're here in New Rochelle at uh, Glen Island, right by the Glen Island Harbor Club. I'm joined by members of the Westchester County Board of Legislators, each of whom I'll introduce and they'll have a chance to speak with us about today's topic. Also a member of the New Rochelle City Council and the leadership of our Parks, Recreation and Conservation team. And we're here to show what uh, a responsible government does. And what a responsible government does is maintain its assets by making sure that we fix things that are broken and we do it before they become even more expensive to do so. We're very fortunate here to have uh, on this facility a beautiful county park in the city of New Rochelle that faces out to the Long Island Sound. But that park, which has with it a catering facility, uh, a beautiful beach, an area for picnicking, we have some kayakers that work off of this island, has to be maintained. And we have to maintain it not just because we need to do it to fix what's broken for today to use it, but for the years to come. And the members of the Board of Legislatures and our, uh, our administration have invested money, and we are fortunate to have uh, additional support, significant support, from the federal government under the leadership of Senator Chuck Schumer in order to accomplish what's been done here today. I'm going to have Kathy O'Connor and Peter Tartaglia talk about this in some greater detail, but today we're looking at a facility that was hammered during Superstorm Sandy, which goes back a number of years. Parts that were hit hardest was the, the seawall around the Harbor Island Club, as well as the two pavilions, one on each side of the beach. These seawalls are important protections to the land from erosion, and uh, the capital project, which is almost $8 million in cost, was reimbursed by FEMA. Design work began, so it required county professionals, county allocation of time and resources, as well as tremendous federal support. So uh, first I'd like to introduce uh, Kathy O'Connor, who is the Commissioner of Parks, Recreation and Conservation, and she will be followed by Peter Tartaglia, our first Deputy Commissioner, who will talk a little bit about what happened on Superstorm Sandy uh, to this facility, and then the process of getting it fixed and repaired. Kathy and Peter. Good morning, and thank you very much, County Executive Latimer. This is one of our absolutely most beautiful facilities out of our 50 facilities that the Parks Department owns and operates. Glen Island Harbor Club, as the County Executive mentioned, really took it on the chin with Superstorm Standy. Quick story, I happened to be here the day after, and I was walking through the facility, and to be honest with you, it was like being on the Titanic. All the windows were blown out, there was about a foot of water everywhere, and a couple of teacups and plates floated by, and I really felt like I was on the Titanic. The fact that we've come this far with this tremendous support of the county executive and the board of legislators and DPW, and I also want to mention our own Dave DeLucia from the Parks Department, who worked tirelessly on putting this back together again. The seawall, and as uh, the county executive mentioned, Peter will, will discuss it at length, but the seawall was kind of the final touch on bringing this facility back to what it can be, and it's really better than it's ever been. Uh, ironically, through COVID, the Glen Island Harbor Club had to shut down along with every other facility in, in the area, and uh, it gave the operator the opportunity to redo the inside of the facility. So on top of everything else, uh, it has been completely redone, beautifully new carpeting, new wall hangings, et cetera. So the facility has never been better. We're so proud to be part of uh, the operation here, and we're very, very excited to have Glen Island Harbor Club part of the Glen Island Park, which, as you all know, was a site for COVID testing up until just about a month ago. And thankfully, through the work of the county executive and everyone else, they finally shut down and we, got a we were able to reopen and have the public enjoy this facility. So on that note, I'd like to just thank again the administration, the county executive is so supportive of all our facilities and is a pleasure to work with. The Board of Legislators hears us and really supports us also, and DPW. So thank you on behalf of the County Parks Department. We're so excited to be back here and ready to uh, rock and roll going forward. Thank you, bye-bye. Good morning and welcome. I'm Peter Tartaglia, First Deputy Commissioner of Parks. Um, just to understand a little bit, we like to give you a little background on how things happen here and how important our parks are. Um, this park is Glen Island Park. In the 1890s, it was 
John Starin's Glen Island. It actually was five islands that you could walk through from piers and causeways, and each island uh, would highlight a Western culture. So that was uh, the beginnings of this park's history. The 1920s, the county took the park over, uh, filled in uh, the island areas and made it into what you see today, which is Glen Island. The Harbor Club that's right here that we've been talking about was Glen Island Casino. There were big band groups here in the 1920s, 30s, 40s. It was even used in the 70s and 80s to a degree for local bands. So this park is, is unbelievable. And when this park was made into the one island, um, that's when our crescent-shaped beach was created, along with a wonderful uh, bathhouse uh, and entryway. So this is a great place for the people of Westchester. It's a wonderful park for them. All right, 2012 was Sandy. Okay, you, you, you take the, the 12 of that and switch it to 2021, and we're nine years later. Um, you know, the New York Giants won the Super Bowl that year. And the top movies were The Avengers, The Dark Knight Rides Again, and The Hunger Games, just to give you perspective of when things happen. Uh, it took us a while to get going. This place was devastated. This park was underwater like you couldn't believe throughout the entire park. Uh, we have been working tirelessly over those years uh, with Westchester County on every level of government, with the federal government, with our departments, as Kathy mentioned, to get this back to where it get it is today. It takes time. The construction started in 2018. Uh, it was completed recently. There were starts and stops during COVID. Uh, we have a lot of rigging out on the water that completed the seawall that you're you know, looking at right here. So a lot of this work was done from the water in. It was a major project. It also includes uh, a couple of other areas within the park, such as the walkways that you're walking on, uh, the two pavilions that are on each side of the beach, um, and some improvements just to the general property over here. Because this protects not only the Harbor Club, but it also protects Glen Island Park proper. And that's what needed to be done. And by the grace of everybody, it's done. And why is it important? What we're building today is not just for the people of today, it is, but it's the legacy and for generations to come. So Westchester County, it's a happy day for Westchester County and people who use Westchester County Parks. Thank you. Before we hear from our uh, Westchester County legislators, each of whom represent a portion of the city of New Rochelle, I want uh, Martha Lopez, who uh, serves on the city council, serves as deputy mayor for the city of New Rochelle, to share some perspectives from the standpoint of a New Rochelle resident and the people that she represents here in the city of New Rochelle. Thank you so much, County Executive, and I want to thank uh, so much our uh, Senator Schumer and the Board of Legislators for making sure that this park continues that, you know, to look as beautiful as it has always been. I, I know that Glenn Miller once upon a time played here, and, uh, and I look at uh, the site and, and I say to myself, how lucky we New Rochelleans are for having the most beautiful park here with us. Again, thank you so much for making sure this is what a responsible government does for the people that live in their city, to make sure that our parks continue to be as beautiful as they were once upon a time. Thank you. Now we've mentioned that the federal assistance that helped make this happen was significant and it came from FEMA but it also came because we have advocates such as Senator Chuck Schumer who made this happen. We want to thank our local representatives, the Congress members that represent Westchester County, Mondaire Jones, Jamal Bowman and Sean Patrick Maloney and our other United States Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. We learned that nothing happens if it isn't done through a team effort and individuals can take uh, a piece of credit for when success occurs. Uh, there are three members of the Board of Legislators who are with us today. They each represent a portion of New Rochelle, and uh, each of them uh, have personal connections to this facility. This facility, which includes the, uh, the Glen Island Harbor Club, which is a profit-making enterprise within the context of what we have, is open to people to enjoy. It is a public asset. And the members of the Board of Legislators and the way that they have supported and advanced certain capital projects have helped make that happen for all of their constituents, all of our constituents. First, we're going to let the plane go by. And I'm going to invite the first of our county legislators to speak, 
who represents this particular area in the county legislature, a resident of New Rochelle, the Honorable Terry Clements. Thank you. I want to first thank uh, County Executive George Latimer for all his hard work in helping to restore this and my colleagues on the board that we supported the initiatives. And it's really a very important uh, environmental uh, piece that we did. Uh, during Hurricane Sandy, high winds and storm surge caused damage to Glen Island. Westchester County has owned and operated Glen Island Park in New Rochelle since 1923. The st storm surge inundated large portions of the 105-acre park with salt water and debris. Glen Island suffered serious damage, and its seawall to its seawall, its sidewalks, its handrail rails, and beach pavilion during Super so Storm Sandy. This seawall is important to the preservation of the land. It prevents erosion from waves and serves as an armor to the land. I want to thank uh, our federal delegation for additional federal funds to complete permanent repairs to Glen Island Park here in New Rochelle. With this funding, additional repairs will be made to the seawall and other areas of the park. Every year, countless Westchester County residents look forward to spending their summers at Glen Island Park. This federal commitment is fu to fully restore Glen Island will help ensure that this resource is available to, for families throughout the county to enjoy. Once again, I want to thank the county executive, my other colleagues uh, on the Board of Legislators, and our federal de delegation for the funds to complete the permanent repairs on Glen Island. Island Park. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Next up, we have Westchester County Legislator, also a New Rochelle resident, uh, the Honorable Damon Moore. Thank you, Mr. County Executive. So the important message today is Glen Island has completed its service to the county and the state as a place for a COVID testing and is now open for business, open for pleasure, I guess. Brides and grooms to be, come and look at this place. Come get married here. The, the, the views are as lovely as ever. The grounds are in better condition. Acres and acres of uh, open parkland for passive recreation, they call it. You know, you have a picnic. There are pavilions. The uh, beach is terrific. I, personally, I was in the water today, and I want to say something else the county does, which is important. You know, up and down the shoreline, let, let's face it, stuff that goes from your house has to go somewhere. But we have tremendous wastewater recovery uh, facilities up and down here. We're renovating on an ongoing basis so that when you jump in that water, it is not only nice and tepid, right, this time of year. It's not cold. It's got a nice temperature. It is clean. Come on down. Dive in. Thank you. And the third county legislator who are going to speak to it, who will speak to us is the Honorable Catherine Parker. Now, Catherine and I uh, live a little ways up the road in Rye, and uh, when we're in Rye, we sing the praises of Playland in our backyard. And since I've represented the same district she has, we, we wax poetic about Harbor Island and Mamaroneck, Manor Park and Larchmont. But we're here in New Rochelle, so today we're totally into Glen Island. Catherine Parker. <laughs> County Executive, I couldn't phrase that, have phrased that better myself. Uh, as the legislator who's been serving the city of New Rochelle the longest, I have to say this is a project that uh, over the course of my tenure has been something that I've been very committed to. Uh, this did start with uh, the storm in 2012 that we now know as Superstorm Sandy. But at the end of the day, this is really all about climate change and what our county is doing for resiliency and what our federal government as a partner to us is doing for resiliency. This is a gem in our county park system. And we recognize that these facilities that are along our coast need to be hardened for future storms. And I commend our parks department, uh, particularly uh, David DeLucia, who worked on this for many, many years, for uh, sticking to this, coming up with a plan, a design, working with our consultants to create something that will withstand, hopefully, uh, another Superstorm Sandy uh, to, again, protect this beautiful, beautiful property that all of us in Westchester have an opportunity to enjoy. Thank you. 
I want to thank my colleagues in government as well, the professionals in the Recreation Department, Parks Department, all throughout county government, some of them who are on the other side of the camera. Uh, just to close our thoughts, and then we'll determine if there's any uh, friends from the media that have questions for us. Um, we have been, uh, over the course of the last few weeks, trying to highlight for you the projects that we as a government have agreed to tackle and are in the process of working on and in some cases completed. And you've seen us all together at Playland in Rye, at the Meerstead facility in Bedford, at Kingsland Point Park where the Tarrytown Lighthouse is over in Sleepy Hollow, at Kensico Dam Plaza in Valhalla, at Tibbetts Brook Park in Yonkers. We've been together at the Lenoir Preserve in the Whiteman Mansion and our plans there. We've shown you what we're doing at the South County Trailway and what's planned for there. And not just our parks, we're at the wastewater treatment plant in Yonkers to talk prospectively about where the future of that facility and neighboring areas are. We've been on the Beeline buses to show you the vibrancy of our bus system. Uh, we've shown you a composting facility that we've created on the Valhalla Grasslands campus. And uh, we've made a point to try to in indicate all of these different initiatives are initiatives that are investments for the future. If, if you think about it from the standpoint of your own personal household, and if you said at the end of the month, honey, we had enough money to pay our bills, um, uh, but the, the roof is leaking. By the way, the, the ceiling is coming down in one of the bedrooms. Uh, the, uh, the, the faucet doesn't put out hot water anymore because there's a clog in the pipes. But we balanced our budget at the end of the month, honey. Uh, honey, you haven't done the job. The job isn't complete. You cannot sacrifice the long-term health of the county and believe that because you balance the budget on paper that you've actually balanced the budget when you leave unmet needs that have to be addressed sooner or later. So this board of legislators and this executive administration, not just any one of us, not just me as the county executive, we've made the commitment that the things that make Westchester important and special require fixing, require updating, and, and with an eye to the future so that our children and our grandchildren can enjoy these things. When we mentioned that at one point in time, the big bands used to play here, I would hear stories from my mother talking about Glenn Miller and Artie Shaw and Benny Goodman playing right here in this grounds. That's the classic sound of the 1940s, and that was right here on this, uh, on this piece of land. That's history, and that's a history that has a current day resonance. They're not here today in that format, but there are people that are here for this facility to enjoy it, and we, we maintain that we can do that. And we also maintain we can do that by finding ways to make sure our budget balances at the end of the month. And we do it by, by renegotiating leases such as our Liberty Lines lease, our Willebrader lease, by having a voluntary separation agreement that saved the county money and at the same time did not require us to lay people off or create a furlough. By coming up with sources of revenue, whether it's through Airbnb or through New Energy that brought money in, or reclaiming money that's been lost through Medicaid funding from individuals. A host of different ways to balance this budget without having to buy for the, to, to put a debt on the future by going into the reserve fund. All of these things are what we've done together. And you may hear other kind of rhetoric in the days to come, but let your eyes be the determining factor. Go to Kingsland Point Park, look at that lighthouse, understand how poorly maintained it has been and what our commitment is to fix it. Go to the Miller House, where you have seen our commitment come to fruition, where we protected something that was collapsing. This is what we believe. We believe this bipartisanly. This is not about one party or the other party. This is about what common sense people do. You don't sit in your house if you've got a broken ceiling or a collapsing ceiling or a leaking roof and have an ideological discussion about whether or not a roof should be fixed. You fix the roof. And that is what we intend to continue to do. And we intend to continue to have you see it for yourself. Come to Glen Island. As Damon said, take a dip in the water. Have a chance to bicycle, as he does, all around and see it for yourself and go to Playland and go to Meerstead and go to uh, Hilltop Hanover and Lasden and Muscoot and understand that this is a great county. There's great people in this county. And we, we need a government that can be just as great for our people as we believe. Not a government that looks in a narrow way at things, but a government that's broad, open, inclusive, and accomplishes results. If there are any questions uh, from the press, I'm happy to take them. If not, you're welcome to call us uh, at our communications office, the general number 995-2900, and uh, uh, Carolyn Fortino and her colleagues will be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Absent that, this is Friday. We wish you a very he healthy and safe weekend. Wear your masks. That's the smart thing to do. And uh, we'll see you on Monday for our normal update at 2 o'clock uh, on a variety of Westchester County issues. Thank you very much. Have a good day.